and welcome. I'm Amy Blaylock with the City of Durham's Office of Public Affairs and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our Facebook Live interview today. We are going to be talking about a brand new program that just launched yesterday, the DEER program. So joining me to give you all the details about what that is and why it matters to you are Laura Hollett. Hey. <laughs> Laura is one of our DEER attorneys and she is with the NC Justice Center. Daniel Bowes, one of our DEER Advisory Board members, who is also with the NC Justice Center. And at the very end here, we have Ryan Smith. He is our city's I-Team Director. So thank you all so much for joining me today to talk about this program. Thank Thanks, you. Ryan. All right, so I'm gonna get started with you, Ryan. So everyone's probably wondering, DEER? What, what is DEER? So tell our Facebook followers, what does DEER mean and what is the DEER program? So DEER stands for the Durham Expunction and Restoration Program, and the program provides free legal services to residents who could not otherwise afford an attorney to help them expunge criminal records off their background and restore long-term suspended driver's license. And it's a program that is funded by the city of Durham. Fantastic. So Laura, yeah. this question is for you. <laughs> so why is something like the DEER program needed in Durham? Uh, well, having uh a criminal record or a suspended driver's license makes it so much harder for citizens of Durham and citizens all over um, to get meaningful employment and housing. Uh, there's thousands of law both on the state level and the federal level that disqualify people from employment for having certain charges on their record and in the same vein not having a driver's license prevents people from getting employment because a majority of jobs require either a valid driver's license or reliable transportation. Ah. And um, so not having a license would be a problem. Not having a license would be a problem. Gotcha. And on the housing front, there's also laws that disqualify people from getting certain types of housing. And then not having a driver's license forces you to live places where either in walking distance from your employment or on the bus line. So that just narrows your options um, severely. And although in Durham there's thousands, tens of thousands of people with criminal records, and of those, majority are eligible for, uh, well, not majority, a large number of them are eligible for an expungement or certificate of relief or some type of relief from their suspended driver's license. Mm -hmm. They just can't assess the relief because they, they don't have jobs, so they can't afford the attorney that will help them with these things. Mm -hmm. Or um, because of limited resources, the free services out there aren't able to help everybody. There's limited resources, a lot of people, a little bit of people doing it. So only over the years, we've seen only like hundreds of people able to access right. the relief. And so our program, we provide free legal services like Ryan was saying earlier. And, and our goal is to close that gap right. for people who are eligible but not able to access it and people who can't access it. And that's why fear is so important because we're trying to close the gap. Mm -hmm. We call it the second second chance gap, which right. I close it. Sounds like it's just a vicious cycle that people get in and just they can never get ahead and they yeah. can never get forward. That's wild. And, that's and, it's, and it has an effect on mostly uh, people of color and poor people. Uh -huh. So um, we just think this is an important issue and we're just here to try to push back against it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So Daniel, so my thing that popped into my head here is just so how many people are affected by this issue in Durham and what types of charges are eligible and not eligible to be addressed through the DEER program? Yeah, well, you know, what I appreciate about the DEER program um, and the innovation and collaboration that it brings to Durham uh, is really two things, both bringing the services on a, a sort of wide array of services, both criminal record expungement and driver's license restoration, but also sort of identifying the scope of the issue. Um, you know, before uh, Deer's efforts, I don't think people in any community around the state had a sense of how big the problem was, especially around um, driver's license suspensions. And so, um, you know, through this collaboration, we were able to get data from the um, administrative office of the courts through the North Carolina Equal Access to Justice Commission um, and saw that, um, for example, with unpaid uh, tickets, where somebody went to court, um, they served whatever sort of uh, collateral sanction they had, whether it was a driver's license suspension or whatever, um, and then um, after 100 days, their license went into an indefinite suspension uh, based on simply not paying the fine and cost. And uh, the fine is usually something like $10. Mm -hmm. The court costs are much more expensive, and today it's, it hovers around $200. And so, mm -hmm. um, so when we looked at the data, we saw um, that there were about 19,000 cases 
um, in Durham uh, that were in failure to comply status dating back uh, to 1986. Mm -hmm. um, average length of suspension was 16 years. Um, and again, <laughs> this is based on um, wow. not sort of any sanction. You know, if you get a DWI conviction, your license is suspended for one year. Uh -huh. We're talking about people who um, had an expired registration or some other, a lot of times poverty related um, traffic infraction who uh, didn't pay a court cost, again, that have risen dramatically over the years. And so, and then have an indefinite suspension for on average 16 years. And so, um, through the DEER program, we we're able to identify. Uh, 14, about 14,000, 14, 15,000 of those um, that are eligible for what we're calling MASH relief, where um, the person doesn't have to um, come into court, where the DA is actually motioning for the relief. And so, um, and that's for about 11,000 individuals. And as Laura said, the majority of those individuals are people of color. Um, and what we've also seen is sort of the cycle where um, how it's interrelated between the failures to comply where you go to court, you can't pay it, your license goes into suspension, and then you have a tough choice. And either you um, don't drive and you're isolated in all the ways that Laura was talking about, or what a lot of people choose to do is continue to drive. Um, but now they are um, unlicensed, they are, um, their vehicle's not registered generally, not um, they don't have insurance. Yeah. And so, um, you know, as ADA Morrell uh, mentioned recently in an article that he did, um, you know, one of the reasons, not only the human toll of this, um, for the individuals who are, who are defendants and, and have their license suspended, but one reason the DA's office is doing this in the city of Durham um, is sort of the, the broader com uh, community impact because um, Durham has the third highest rate of automobile accidents in the state. And so if you get a huge chunk of people who are out there driving around without a license, that has severe consequences, not only on them, um, but on other drivers. Right. And so, um, you know, that's just one example that, uh, as far as the, um, 11,000 individuals who we're trying to provide relief for um, who have unpaid debt. Um, mm -hmm. One of the most dramatic numbers is that uh, the Durham DA's office took dismissals for um, 72,000 cases, um, again, with um, for cases that dated back to the 1980s. Um, wow. And about 50,000 of those were for failures to appear. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and again, disproportionately people of color. And so that's on the driver's license side. On the criminal record side, mm -hmm. um, you know, one in three adults has a criminal record in North Carolina, in the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, we estimate there's about two million people in North, in, uh, North Carolina with suspension. Um, and so you're talking about more than 100,000 people, in, at least in Durham, um, with some type of criminal record. And we think that, um, that most of those records are actually eligible for expunction, but uh, as Laura said, there's just not access to the relief that is currently available. Okay, well that leads me to the next question, and this, mm -hmm. Ron, I'd love for you to address this for our Facebook followers. So there may be some in our community that feel this program shouldn't help mm -hmm. do this, that if you do the crime, you do the time. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to talk to us a bit about fairness and public safety and accountability of the DEER program mm -hmm. and addressing those concerns that some may have in our community. Great, uh, so let's start with public safety. So first, uh, around the driver's license work that this office is supporting in this program, it's entirely consistent with public safety because everyone, uh, there were a number of charges that were ineligible. So the DA looked at all the charges that were leading to license suspensions, and if those charges involved driving while intoxicated, or if they involved a couple dozen other high-risk offenses, mm -hmm. those were off the table and are not eligible under this program. Okay. So there was an, a, you know, a definite focus on public safety and making sure that uh, that individuals who had those types of offenses were not eligible under this. And that when you look at the data, the story is that most people with these long-term suspended and revoked driver's license are it's not due to a DWI or these high-risk events. It is very often due to more minor, uh, minor traffic violations or moving violations, like mm -hmm. speeding five or 10 over or something like that. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so there's that. Accountability. This is all about accountability. Everyone who's benefiting from this program lost their license for at least two years, and that is a steep price to pay. And so everyone's being held accountable. Everyone has lost their license for two years. This is about helping people get back on the road after having paid what is still a very steep price. And then this is all about fairness because we're talking about individuals, again, who are, who are primarily people of color and primarily people who could not afford to pay traffic tickets suffering worse consequences for longer periods of time than people with money or people who are white. And that is fundamentally not fair. And so I think DEER is all about fairness. It's all about accountability and it's all about public safety. Gotcha. Can I add something there? Absolutely. Uh, it's also um, about resetting the system. Uh, as Ryan mm -hmm. said, sort of breaking the cycle and resetting the system. Um, you know, 
there's not a conversation about another um, 70,000 uh, cases being dismissed. This was sort of a, a one-time effort as far as the mass dismissals to clear out this backlog of cases mm -hmm. that, again, were minor, but also were leading to severe consequences in people's lives. So, um, but now moving forward, what we're trying to do is actually work with the DA's office to, on the front end, um, inquire about ability to pay. So you're not, I mean, this all comes down to criminalizing poverty, and that's what mm -hmm. we're trying to push against. And um, and, and that's what we're sort of backed into. You know, I don't think judges are out there or DAs or sort of all actors in the system are saying that person should lose their license because they're poor. But effectively, that's what's happening unless there's a concerted effort um, to on the front end, um, after we've cleaned up this backlog of cases, mm -hmm. to actually uh, uh, determine a person's ability to pay before they actually get charged these $200 in court costs or $500 or whatever it, uh, it is, it's generally hundreds of dollars, whether they can actually afford to pay that. And um, for many families who are just trying to make ends meet and, and, um, and that sort of shock and having to pay that amount of money um, in 100 days or less is just not possible. Wow, wow. So we're coming to you live today from the Deer offices. So Ryan, you, you have a physical location where people can come and meet for free with attorneys and paralegal here. So for our followers, where are we located right now and what hours and days of the week is your team here ready to help? So the Deer office is located in the Durham County Courthouse on the sixth floor in suite 6400. If you come to the courthouse and you follow signs for drug treatment court because we are in space that is generously given to us at no cost to the city from the Criminal Justice Resource Center, we're sharing mm -hmm. office with there, but it's sixth floor, suite 6400, and we have walk-in hours from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. And you can come, go through an intake process, find out if the program um, can, can address your, your needs. And we have four amazing attorneys and a paralegal. I'm just going to uh, give shout-outs and thanks. So Laura Holland from the Justice Center. We have our paralegal, Lauren Robbins. We have two city attorneys, uh, Arnetta and Henry. And then we also have an attorney from Legal Aid, Joseph Leisure. And so they're here to meet with you. They're doing amazing work and um, hope you'll come down and check it out. Okay, I have a question for Daniel. I want to follow up on oh, something. Oh, sure. <laughs> Just on the expunction piece, when I, I heard it, you, I, I heard you as saying that most, most types of charges are eligible for expunction. And I just think it might be helpful to clarify that there was a big expansion, but there are a lot, a lot of people will have charges that are not eligible for expunction. Um, and I don't know if we could just provide so individuals have a, like, a clear sense of what types of things may and may not be eligible, even at a high level, it's complicated. But. Yeah, and so when I said that, I, uh, what I really meant was most, uh, not most types of uh, um, records are eligible for expunction, but most people um, with criminal records are eligible for some type of expunction mm -hmm. because the easiest thing to get expunged in North Carolina is dismissed charges. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of people don't even understand um, that when you have a charge dismissed, um, that it stays on your record. And so every time a landlord or wow. an employer is looking at that, um, they're seeing it. And generally, uh, uh, many times they're denying people based on even a dismissed charge. So um, you have to take that additional step um, to actually expunge the record. And that's one of the, um, you know, there's efforts at the legislature right now to automate the process. Actually, uh, Senator Floyd McKissick um, of Durham is leading that effort. Um, but until we have a change in state law like that, uh, we're trying to sort of do a, a, a bootleg automation uh, in Durham where uh, when the charge gets dismissed, uh, well, when, the, when the charge gets dismissed um, downstairs, that the DAs and public defenders immediately send people upstairs and say, that's going to stay on your record right. unless you get it expunged. Go upstairs right now and begin that process. Sweet 6400. Exactly. So, uh, it, nice. exactly. So that, okay. you know, because again, that's how you... Um, I think an innovative way to provide access that people mm -hmm. um, yeah. don't generally know because too often people only run up against these severe collateral consequences um, when they're being denied that opportunity, when they're being denied that housing, they mm -hmm. didn't even know it was on the record. And so mm -hmm. dismissed charges are sort of the, uh, one of the biggest things we're uh, trying to do here. Other than that, um, people can, the, uh, can get a first time nonviolent conviction expunged. Um, and so that's either a misdemeanor or a felony. And, um, and that is a sort of progress in itself. Again, uh, Senator Floyd McKissick has led that effort at the state legislature to expand um, expunction laws. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, right now, and unfortunately, um, until the law expands further, 
um, the people who are facing the most severe consequences, people coming out of prison, are generally not eligible um, for expunction because it is limited to dismissed charges mm -hmm. um, and first time convictions. So if somebody's had a substance use issue or um, just appeared in their lives where they were um, uh, convicted of several crimes, mm -hmm. uh, then those individuals are not generally going to be eligible for an expunction. Okay. All right. Now, Laura, I want you to talk a bit about this, which I think is really cool. Yeah. So we're here in the Deer office today, but you don't have to physically come to the Deer office to see if you're eligible for some type of help. So tell me a little bit, Laura, tell our followers a little bit about this new website portal that also just launched yesterday, secondchancedriving.org. So tell us a bit more about, you know, what does this web portal do? And when people <coughs> come to it, what are they gonna find? What does it enable them to do? Well, the secondchancedriving.org, that's a new website, so I'm trying to get it down. <laughs> Got it. Um, so there's three big things that you could do on that website. Um, so it gives you opportunity to plug in your, your name, your first name, your last name, and your birthday to see first if you've already benefited from some of the efforts that have taken place. Oh, so um, you could have gotten help and not even know it. Right, but. because the, like the DA's oh, office, right. as was mentioned before, the district attorney's uh -huh. office, graciously has taken dismissals on about 50,000 traffic cases. So you can plug your name in with your birthday to see if you're one of those people who've already benefited from that effort. And also, um, we the district attorney's office has identified about 15,000 unpaid, old unpaid traffic tickets uh -huh. that they're divided into groups, 52 groups, and they're taking up a group at a time in front of the court to see if the court is willing to waive that debt. Uh -huh. So, so far about six groups have gone up so you could go see if your name is part of those groups that has already been considered by the judge. Cases is that? It's about um, seventeen hundred cases. Wow! I think. I've already had I've all already the fines had. and fees. And they might not even know it. Yes. Oh, they, so, would, they wouldn't know it unless um, they, they check this website. Did we so. say secondchancedriving.org? Yes, so like, go there. <laughs> we should maybe talk about why I mean, why they wouldn't know it. So one, we're working with the data, and the data because we're talking about data that goes back 30 years, yeah. we had last known address, which is not good. I mean, that's right. not a good way. And so we had to develop this website to solve for the problem that individuals were benefiting from this program uh, in the DA's office that we're supporting. Mm -hmm. It was very hard to communicate with them. And so this website is part of the solution. And then we'll also, in the coming weeks, be working with uh, community organizers who will go out into the community mm -hmm. to kind of raise visibility and gotcha. trust so that the individuals know what this is. Mm -hmm. Um, and what it's doing and, mm -hmm. and can go access it. And I think your website was you it was developed with Code the Dream. Yes. Code the Dream, yes. Code we'll give dream. a big shout out to yes. Code the Dream and their students who, who did some great work on this. That's so. awesome, awesome. So I guess my next question, and I just have to ask Daniel, Brian, those numbers that you mentioned earlier, you know, 19,000 cases, 15,000, <coughs> wow, that is a tremendous caseload for four attorneys and one paralegal to tackle. So. I guess my next question would be, we live in a community that has two great law schools. Do you need volunteers? And if you do, what kind of work do you need help with? And how would they go about reaching out to you to say, yeah, I want to volunteer and help with that? Yeah. Um, well, I, I want to be clear here that I think one of the most innovative um, parts of this program is that, uh, and really the big transition that happened between the program we did last summer, mm -hmm. where we were meeting with individuals who were referred by community members and then advocating, representing them in front of the court and saying, um, uh, asking the court to eliminate the fees and asking the DA to consent. The big transition that's happened here um, that we're asking other DAs to follow around the state is that now it's the DA's office motioning for relief. That they're the ones that saying, um, based on the proper administration of justice, mm -hmm. how long these suspensions have gone on based on unpaid uh, court costs, that um, it's in the interest of justice to resolve this case and eliminate the fees, let the person get their license back. And so, um, and, and so that model allows you to, with a very, um, you know, so we say four terms, but really that's Laura doing that part of the, the work, uh, where she's the one um, uh, reviewing the cases mm -hmm. and supervising that effort, and then drafting the motions for the DA's office, you know, every other Monday to take in front of the court um, three, two, three hundred cases each time, um, and asking the, um, the court to eliminate the debt. And so it is as efficient a delivery of service as you can have. The downside is communicating with individuals who've gotten the relief, but we, as Ryan just said, we're trying to problem solve that. And so um, it really lends itself to a, a sort of the mass relief model that we're um, uh, incorporating here to deal with these the huge need. And so, um, and, and what Laura did not mention in the last one, uh, yeah. I think she was going to, was um, 
was, you know, when somebody finds out they're eligible for relief or they just come into the office, um, that they actually get um, a, an additional level of relief. They, um, because we meet with them, we pull their statewide driving record um, and say, okay, we took care of the uh, issues in Durham, uh -huh. but you also have issues in, issues in Orange County, Wake County, uh, and wherever. Right. And now the best thing about this is, um, and what we've acknowledged is that we have to have a regional approach to this because mm -hmm. people generally don't, if they keep driving, right. uh, they don't just drive in Durham. Correct. Drive we are down the triad. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so now the good thing is that those other communities haven't adopted the mass relief model, but they're where Durham was last year. And I hope that they'll evolve to where Durham is now. Mm -hmm. But even now, uh, there's a great opportunity for us to clear up the issues in Durham and then either us directly or with volunteer attorneys mm -hmm. go to uh, Wake County and go to Orange County and clear up those issues. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, we're not going to pat ourselves on the back for getting a charge dismissed or a debt remitted. Mm -hmm. What we're going to be excited about is getting a license reinstated. Right. Um, and so we're trying to take people all the way through the finish line or get a record expunged. Um, and, but that really does take um, uh, support from volunteer attorneys. There's, you can go to deardurham.org uh, um, mm -hmm. to sign up for, uh, if, you're a if you're a law student or a, an attorney who wants to get involved with this, um, you can go there to sign up. Um, and the two main ways that right now um, that we really need help is reviewing um, uh, the re uh, driving records of yeah. individuals mm -hmm. to say exactly why somebody's license is eliminated, mm -hmm. and then also staffing these clinics that we were talking about, oh, where somebody okay. goes to the website, they say, okay, I just found out that I had th these two charges dismissed, this debt remitted, um, but I need to know what else is on my record. They can mm -hmm. sign up at that point, um, and then that's when um, they can meet with uh, volunteer attorneys who will be trained and supervised by dear staff attorneys. And um, and already, you know, we're, we always welcome um, additional attorneys, but are already thankful for uh, the good work that Duke Law School is doing, NCCU Absolutely. Law School, um, right. the um, the Durham Bar Association, mm -hmm. um, the uh, George, George uh, H.Y. Bar. H -H uh -huh. Bar. Um, and so it really is, I mean, uh, right among the innovative practices here is the broad collaboration. So these attorneys and law students and paralegals, do you, will you provide training to, to help them with the program, get on board, and, and is that also something yeah. they would yeah. expect we'll, to receive? There'll be training and supervision for all volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the first step, if you're interested in volunteering, is to go to deardurham.org and you can sign up there, correct? There's a whole entry Correct, world. there's a whole yeah, form where you can sign up and you can see some of the specific opportunities and then we will also follow up as additional opportunities become available. Fantastic. So I have one last question for all three of you, and then I'm going to let you go because you have <laughs> 19,000 cases to work through. So if there is one thing that you want our Facebook followers to remember about the DEER program and what you've stated today, if they remember nothing else, what would it be? So Laura, you want to go first? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think um, one of the most important things to remember about the DEER project and one of the things that I'm most excited about is that uh, the DEER project, one of the goals along with all of our partners and the city of Durham is to end this perpetual cycle of driver's license suspension because we know that it impacts not only families, uh, individuals, but it impacts their families as well um, and it has a disproportionate effect on people of color and people who are not financially stable and I think it's important to know that one of the missions of the DEER office as well, as well as the city of Durham is to kind of create equity in the system which has historically disenfranchised people of color and people with low financial means. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really exciting. Um, this Absolutely. is a really exciting effort and I look forward to continuing to work with you now. Awesome. All right, how about you, Daniel? Any closing thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'll just piggyback on what Laura was saying and, and talk about the human toll of this. That, um, you know, I think that, um, you know, I'm an advocate at the North Carolina Legislature and, and focus on criminal justice reform. And for a lot of the efforts we focus on, you have to sort of bring people um, and educate them on the issues. I think with this one, people understand uh, a couple of things. They understand how important and how much they depend on their driver's license mm -hmm. and how much it would affect their, their life if they couldn't drive. Um, but then also, uh, you know, anybody who's been to, uh, to court, to traffic court in a long time, understands how rapidly people are sort of sent through there. Um, and then also, they've experienced a sort of a sticker shock to see, oh, I, you know, I was speeding and I got a $10 fine and $250 in court costs. Um, and, and so it, I, I think people are, um, are, are 
coming to this and, and more as advocates and seeing the, that there needs to be concerted action to break people out of this cycle. And especially when, you know, one of the things we try to do here is catalog um, the impact on people and families. And, it, and it's devastating. You see people, um, you know, if you have an asthmatic child that has to go to the, um, uh, to the emergency room, that's already a crisis in itself. But then what if you can't drive legally? Um, you know, if you have to pay your first two hours of wages to Uber just to get to the job site and back. Uh, if you can't visit your kids in Charlotte, uh, you can't legally drive. And it just, right. it affects all parts of people's lives. And so, um, you know, we could go about doing the way things have and just leave this huge group of people behind, or we could look for innovative solutions. And I'm really excited that Durham is really leading the way here, um, but there are other efforts around the state, especially on driver's license restoration and criminal record expungement, um, that, that a lot of DAs can be proud of, but definitely Durham um, is, is, is right now the most ambitious. Wow, of course it is, the Bull City. Um, Ryan. You're the last one. Closing thoughts for our followers. So closing thoughts are when I think about what deer is, I think that it is a sign that Durham as a city believes in second chances and is trying to do more um, to make the city a city of second chances. And we have a lot more work to do and we all have responsibility in that work. Um, but this is a good step in the, in the right direction. And then we believe in shared economic prosperity and we know that we don't have that yet. And we can't have that if individuals cannot find work and cannot find, find housing. So this is, you know, deer is a part of the values that we have as a city and an expression of that. The thing I want to say is I have a lot of gratitude and this is all about collaboration. When I think about what deer is, it is not just the city of Durham. It is a really dynamic collaboration that includes, of course, the Justice Center, legal aid. It includes uh, our district attorney and the amazing leadership that we have from our DA's office. We could not do this without a, a bold, strong DA. It includes our judges. We have two judges who sit on the deer advisory board. Who, are, who co chair our advisory boards, so Judge Amanda Maris and Judge Josephine Davis, mm -hmm. um, and our local law schools, and so many individuals. And I know I'm not going to name everyone, but you know, the thing that sticks with me is that we're better together, that deer is an expression of that, that we can't do that in silos, and that we're coming together around this vision of this work, and we're going to make more possible because we're all leaning in together in this work. And that is really encouraging. And I think, too, it's important to point out that this is also the first big project by the Durham I team which is the oh, City yeah, of Drums Innovation yeah. Team, and that all started back in 2017 when Bloomberg Philanthropies gave the City of Drum a grant to fund the work of the I-Team, and so this is the first big project from that. So the collaboration is not just here in Durham, but support nationally as well. So Absolutely. We're very appreciative of the support we've had from Bloomberg that's made this type of transformational mm -hmm. work possible. Mm -hmm. And also we got a, a grant from um, Race Forward to support some of the community organizing work. So the Government Alliance, through a program called the Government Alliance for Race and Equity. And of course this work is a lot as we've touched on about race equity. So appreciate that support. And I will say, we might be coming to other foundations out there. So if you're watching, <laughs> this this is an effort that is Break really promising and transformative, <laughs> and we're going to need additional funding to make it possible. So we'll wow. be reaching out. Yeah. Can, awesome. I, can I just say that, um, you know, the Justice Center on that thing is um, the Annie E. Casey Foundation. Mm -hmm. They have an initiative on reducing debt in households of color in the South. Um, and so that's how we come to this issue as far as the funding. Um, and I think Ryan's right that, uh, that um, in order to scale this up even larger and mm -hmm. go to other communities, take an original approach, we will have to depend more on, uh, even more on foundations. Right. Wow, that's wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for talking. Yeah, I know you're busy. You have 19,000 cases waiting for you to get to, so I'm gonna stop asking questions and let you get back to your job. But thank you for being here today and for sharing this information Thanks, with our Aaron. Facebook followers so they have a really good understanding of the DEER program. So if you have questions about the DEER program that we did not answer today, please leave a comment for us and we will do our very best to respond with information as soon as possible. Also, I just want to reiterate that if you are interested in seeing if you qualify for help through this program, secondchancedriving.org is your website to go to. And if you are watching and you want to volunteer, please go to DearDurham.org and follow the prompts to volunteer. Uh, I am Amy Blaylock with the City of Durham's Office of Public Affairs. Thank you for watching today.